Let's talk about the number one top nutrient deficiency in rotator cuff injuries and a lot of other joint injuries as well, okay? This deficiency is actually a mineral deficiency, which I'm gonna to get to, but I wanna give you a, just a very brief overview of the rotator cuff muscles, okay? So here's the arm joint right here. Here's the back part, okay, of your shoulder. And this is the front part right here. Here's the clavicle. So there's really four muscles involved with the rotator cuff. It's called sits, okay? You have this top muscle right here that lifts your arm up right here. It's called the supraspinatus. Then you have the infraspinatus. It's below this spine right here. And then right below that, you have this teres minor muscle. And then on the inside, you have the subscapularis. So those are the four rotator cuff muscles. All right, now there's a lot of information we can talk about the rotator cuffs, but a lot of it's not important. Um, it's just history. I wanna talk primarily about the important things you need to know about your rotator cuff muscles. Now, up to 94% of all treatments to the rotator cuff um, involve more treatment because of recurrent repairs and failures. So in other words, it doesn't have a really good success rate, okay? So this is why I'm doing this video, to give you another solution that can help with your concurrent treatment. Now, the next most important thing to know is that the majority of rotator cuff problems are related to the tendon, not the muscle, okay, but the tendons. So tendons connect from muscle to bone. Ligaments connect bone to bone, but tendons go from the muscle to the bone. And these ligaments are incredibly strong, but they are susceptible to issues, okay? A couple of the things you need to know. Um, tendons have a very poor blood supply. And so when they get injured, uh, they don't heal like muscles do that have a large blood supply. And when you injure a tendon, you get a lowered amount of oxygen, it's called hypoxia. And that triggers something else, which I don't wanna get into the complexities of, but it triggers some new blood supply to that uh, tendon, okay? But there's an interesting paradox um, that happens. So even though this hypoxic condition creates more blood supply, which is supposed to increase more oxygen and nutrients, it actually doesn't. There still seems to be this persistent hypoxic state. And if you look a little bit deeper into that, what occurs when you have this injury is you have this, um, this leaky tendon. It starts leaking, very similar to uh, leaky gut. So you have this loss of oxygen and loss of nutrients. The other point about these tendons when they get injured is you don't really see inflammation going on. So it's not really an inflamed tendon. Okay, that's not what's happening. You definitely have pain and things like that, but you don't necessarily have inflammation. The other thing you need to know about the tendons is they heal with disorganized tissue, which is scar tissue. Uh, they don't uh, heal with the normal, uh, nice fibers that are interwoven uh, and keep things nice and strong. They heal with basically scar tissue as its survival mechanism, just to patch it up with some scar tissue. And the problem with that long-term is it heals in a weakened state. And so you may find that with, regardless of what treatment you have, it's never gonna be as strong as it was. And that's with my case too. I injured this shoulder, fractured it, and this elbow, two separate injuries. And uh, man, I've worked this thing uh, for so long, x-rays, et cetera. There's a little bit of, tiny bit of arthritis, but it's really uh, from the injury. And uh, so there are some things you can do to maximize the strength. But as far as it coming back 100%, uh, that's probably not gonna happen. And the other two things you don't wanna do is apply cold to a rotator cuff injury. Now it might decrease pain, but it actually gets rid of all the things that are necessary to come to bring into the healing. Also rest is not the best idea as well, because with rest, you just have more scar tissue. The best thing is to keep it moving as much as possible at your level. Okay. So now I'm not talking about a complete tear. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about trauma to the tendon as well. So now the question is, what should you do? Okay. If there's just arthritis in your shoulder and there's not an actual tear of your rotator cuff tendons, hanging is one of the best stretches, okay, with an overhead bar. But if there's trauma to the tendon, hanging might not be a good idea. Isometric exercises are really good for 
tendon problems because you're not creating this motion, but you are stimulating the area and it's really good for pain. Vitamin D is very, very important. Not the most important one, but this will decrease inflammation. Vitamin C is also necessary for collagen repair, okay? Not the most important nutrient, but important. Sufficient amino acids from protein, very important, but not the most important. I already mentioned this, keeping things moving on a regular basis is very, very important in rehabbing. And also eccentric exercise. I've done a video on this. Um, this is where you kind of reverse the exercise. So if you're gonna do some type of motion where you're uh, contracting the muscles and you're shortening the muscles, uh, that would be not this, okay? This is elongating the muscles. Uh, I will put some links down below. But the most important nutrient, okay, for rehabbing a tendon is manganese, okay? Now, why would a manganese deficiency slow down your healing of tendons? Because manganese is not only a powerful antioxidant. So this enzyme right here, which is completely dependent on manganese, has its highest concentration in your tendons, okay? And then this turns into this enzyme, which specifically regulates the repair of your enzyme. And then there's another enzyme that manganese is involved with, which has everything to do with collagen formation. So if you are deficient in manganese, okay, which a lot of people are, you're gonna have a heck of a time keeping your tendons strong. You're gonna have a heck of a time rehabbing and repairing your tendons. So manganese is the most important uh, trace mineral for strengthening your tendons as well as your ligaments. That's why in my clinic, I used to use it for low back pain, especially if there's a disc involved. But for rotator cuff, it's hands down, it's one of the best trace minerals. Now, if you look up the source of uh, where you get manganese from, they'll say whole grains, legumes, vegetables, things like that. But the problem with whole grains is the phytic acid and other anti-nutrients that will block the absorption of manganese. So the best source of manganese is shellfish, okay? Clams, mussels, other types of shellfish. If you're gonna take it as a supplement, I would take about 200 milligrams, okay? For a period of time, maybe for a month, and then I would back off and I probably wouldn't take it. I would try to focus on getting it from the food. Now, the, um, the AI for uh, manganese, that's the adequate intake amount. So this represents a figure that gives you a certain amount to prevent a deficiency, but nothing to do with maintaining health of that nutrient, but just to prevent a deficiency is like 2.3 milligrams. That's a joke. It's so small. The other thing you need to know is when you take statins, steroids, and antibiotics, specifically Cipro, all three of these uh, types of medications can stop the healing of a damaged tendon. If you haven't seen this video on inflammation, I think you should check it out right here.